Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Touch OSC. Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer here, and we are back looking at Logic Pro, and we are using Touch OSC, and we're gonna look at sending and receiving OSC signals. So if you're curious about how to set up your tablet device with Logic, uh, your tablet using Touch OSC, you'll probably want to take a look at the previous video, the last video I did, because uh, that shows you just how to do that. And it also shows you how to use the Logic Pad template. Now there is a Logic app that you could download and use. Uh, people did point that out, uh, but we're talking about Touch OSC here. So uh, that's why we are using that Logic Pad uh, template in Touch OSC, and now we'll take it a step further with designing your own template, and really we're gonna look at OSC signals, because this has been something that a lot of people have had questions about. So, first things first, what we're gonna do is build the template. So, let's jump into Touch OSC. Okay, so, in our Touch OSC template, uh, we've got an empty page. Let's go ahead and add a label. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll keep this red and let's add a fader and make this a little bit bigger. Now what we want to do is rename these uh, objects. So this label right now, it's just called label three, but we want to name this track name one. Perfect. And then our volume, our fader here, we're going to call this volume one. All right, and now let's add, we're gonna add a pager. Now I'll explain why we're gonna do this in a little bit, but first let's just design this whole thing out. We can select that, there we go. And let's double click inside. And again, we'll add a label. I'm gonna zoom in here, make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna make this blue. And let's call this track name two. And then let's add a fader. And just like before, we're going to name this volume two. And let's also make this blue. So when objects are added, uh, they tend to have a message already. So if you added a fader, it has a MIDI message and an OSC message already attached. But for this instance, we don't want this MIDI message. So let's go down here to the bottom and let's remove this MIDI control message. And you can see we already have the OSC message, one slash volume two, that's perfect. Labels, however, do not have any messages, so we need to add them. So let's hit this plus sign on the side, OSC, and now you can see it's added this uh, track name to text. So we're not sending anything from a label, so you can uncheck send. Now let's exit out of this, and then let's select our red label. Same thing, we're gonna need to add an OSC message. Hit that plus sign, and then turn off send. And then on our red fader, let's go ahead and remove the MIDI message. And that is all we need to do for right now. So you can go ahead and close that menu and hit play on your template. Now I already have mine connected to my laptop here. Uh, so hopefully you have already done that too. If you haven't, check out that previous video and do that now. So here we are in Logic Pro, and I'm going to add a track so that we have one. So let's just add this in, and it's, uh, let's just call it Audio One, that's fine. Let's add another track, and let's call this one a software instrument. Uh, Alchemy is perfect, and then create that. And you can see something just changed on our blue fader. So if we were to move that fader, we're already controlling this. But if we move our red fader, we're not moving anything. And it also is still saying label. So why is that happening? 
So let's open up Logic, Control Surfaces, and Controller Assignments. And here you have all of your MIDI and OSC signals. And this is so cool and so well organized. And of course it is, right? This is Apple. Uh, but we've taken a look at a lot of different DAWs throughout the series. And I got to say, this is the best organized OSC and MIDI signals uh, that I've seen. Second, uh, you know, second place is probably Reaper. Um, but this is so awesome. So let's take a look here. Let's go to pages and number one under modes and volume two. We're going to look at two. So you can see it says this is the OSC path, right? We're not doing a MIDI message here, but this OSC message is already made in logic. So real quick, on your template, exit out of play mode and then select in here in this pager and let's select this fader. Open it up and what is it called? Let's take a look at that OSC message, slash one slash volume two. And right here, that's what ours is called, slash one slash volume two. And you can see that's why automatically it was able to control things. Now, if we close out of this and we look at our uh, red fader, our OSC signal, it doesn't have a one in front of it. It's just called slash volume one. And that's because it's not in a pager. When you put something in a pager, it adds the pager name behind the object name. So it would be slash one for the pager, slash track volume or slash volume one. So that's why it's not working. So if we look here, volume one, you can see the value, the touch release, the label, it's all slash one, but in our actual OSC template, it's just slash one or sorry, there's no slash, it's just slash volume one. So let's remove the pager here. We're gonna select in here and just delete the slash one, all this stuff, because we don't need it. And let's close this out. Now, we should be able to press play, and now we're moving our red fader, and you can see it's moving our track. Now our label hasn't updated, but if you were to select in here, hit enter, now it's refreshed, and you can see that our red label says audio one. Let's change that real quick. We're gonna say Lancelot, that's my dog's name. You can see that has changed. That was a very simple way to receive OSC signals and send something simple like volume controls. Now, if we were to open up this menu again, we can see there are a ton of different things that we could do, right? You could add your solo buttons, uh, you could add your mute buttons, and all of these have already been named and set up. So I encourage you to play around in here and take a look at, you've got FX that have already been aligned, pagers, you've got uh, markers, um, all sorts of different things. In our template, let's go ahead and close this out and let's add a button. So I'm gonna move this pager up. We don't need this whole thing. And we're gonna add a little button. Let's take this button and I'm gonna make this yellow. And I think I want this to be a circle. Actually, for the sake of this, let's make it a triangle. You'll see what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do a triangle and then we're going to go west because we want it to look like we're heading backwards or rewinding. So on this, we want to remove our uh, messages because right, like I said, when you add an object, a message is automatically put on top of it. So let's delete that MIDI message and let's go ahead and call this rewind. So under control name, we're calling it rewind and you can hit play now here in logic if we look at uh, our controls let's say we want to look at the transport and default moving rewind here that's actually what it's called slash rewind is the label so let's close this out if I was to select measure 13 but then I hit this yellow button you can see I'm going back by one measure So quick and easy, there's already a ton of different things inside Logic that are already built for you to use OSC signals from your Touch OSC template.
Now, the other thing that I would recommend doing is working with whatever your, let's say you're composing and you've got a virtual instrument. So you could add that in, figure out your MIDI learn, figure out what the FX controls are on your back end, on your logic end, and then you can name them in your template. And you should be able to have some interesting control back and forth. Um, of course, when I'm doing things in Reaper, a lot of the time I'm using a MIDI signal, um, and that was just for clarity purpose. Uh, but however it makes it work for you, you could use either a MIDI signal or an OSC message. And let's just look at a real quick MIDI learn situation. So let's add another button. And let's make this a bright like pink. And we can keep this named button too. But as we go down here to MIDI, we want to change this. Let's make this constant. And I want to send channel one, control three. Perfect. And in fact, we can get rid of the OSC message because we don't need it for the purpose of this trial. So let's go ahead and hit play on that. We can see our button there. We click it, nothing's happening. So in Logic Pro, let's go to control surface, controller assignments. And in new zone, because um, this is one I have, but you could just hit plus uh, and add a whole new one. We're gonna say this is touch OSC template. And let's add a new mode. And this is my mode. And now let's add a new controller, but let's go ahead and press learn mode. And no messages received yet, you can see that. Let's hit our purple button and it's been learned. And you can see that's Control channel one, three. This is what we're sending, and we can change what the controller assignment is. So let's change this global to key command, uh, and that's global commands and record. So now if we were to close this out, so let's select our second instrument here. We can control the volume still, as you can see. And let's just click on measure three, hit our pink button, and you can see it jumped us back to start recording. It's a pretty slow tempo, but you can still see that it's working. So Logic Pro makes sending and receiving OSC messages very simple and very organized. Um, you may want to design your template and plan out all of the different things that you want to do. And then you could just send everything in MIDI Learn, um, or you could also use some of those uh, OSC signals and turn those on, you know, slash volume. So you just gotta wanna watch out if you're using a pager to remove that slash one from your Logic Pro uh, OSC, you know, control there, or add it in if you are using that um, on your OSC template. So it just really depends on what you're doing. Hopefully you've learned something about working with Touch OSC and Logic Pro today. You can like this video and please subscribe to the channel. We've got so much more to look at. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.